The title of our study, our Bible study, is My Hope is Alive. See, you can personalize it. Is your hope. Say, my hope is alive. Amen. That is wonderful. And it tells us in our mid text, First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Said be Apostle Peter, praising the God of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that has begotten us again unto a living hope. Says, I hope is alive. And uh, we're not having hope. Then God came to show us this hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to show us the inheritance that is incorruptible, undefined and faded not away, the reserved one, the unchangeable. And so, we are kept by the power of God through faith in his hope, very lively hope, that my hope is alive. Peter says, he says, your hope is alive. The hope of every one of us. You know, Jesus did not die only for certain people. He died for the whole world. And so the apostle is advertising to us that God himself has begotten us, has brought us to this living hope so that we can have this hope that is sure and steadfast. This hope that is the anchor of our soul, that we have hope and this hope is alive, the apostle wrote. Now, the man Job in the old time said this in Job chapter 19, verse 25 to 27. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin once destroy this body, Yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Job, prophesying, says that he knows that his Redeemer liveth, that will redeem him from all corruption, I will redeem him. That though the ones were eating him up, you know, Job had diseases. He said that the devil blew everything he has and then put his incurable sickness on him, was dying. Though he's living physically, the body was dying. And so he says, in this condition, when everything is hopeless, that he know that his Redeemer is alive. Amen. And he shall stand at the latter day upon this earth. 
what Job did not realize that he was speaking correctly. What Job did not realize is that the Redeemer indeed is alive and with him. Yes. What he didn't know that he is looking at the Redeemer. That he says, I know he lives. Though worms are eating me up, the worms cannot eat my Redeemer. I have that which is, it cannot be corrupted, cannot decay. I have one that cannot fail. And he discovered it to be so. And that's why he says that later when the Lord now showed him, Job, you need to see me. So God wants us to see this Redeemer. That is really how the hope, our hope comes alive when we see him. And so Job, when he now saw the Redeemer, he is talking off. He said, I was hearing about you before I was hearing. Now I see my Redeemer. And uh, truly my Redeemer liveth is living today yeah. and then he now abhorred himself that how foolish he was how ignorant he was that the redeemer he's looking at redeemer and he's not aware that he's the redeemer god wants us to be aware that he is the redeemer the holy one of israel is the redeemer so job did not know that the holy one is his redeemer he's god he is alive he came to deliver us from corruption, from failure to himself, so that we can have this living hope. See, the hope that is not present, is not alive, is not hope. Says that this hope is for the living. And so that's why Job says, I am going to see him myself. So you need to see this. Hope yourself, not another. Because for one to have this hope, we have to see him. And this is the whole essence why he came. That he had begotten us to a lively hope again. Post Peter wrote that truly God came in the man Christ Jesus. And to show us that God is living. He is alive forevermore. And though we die as human, God does not die. Though we come and go, God is present permanently. And so why we live is that we should receive this living hope. We should see that our hope is alive and not missing his present. You know, when he left the flesh, he came to the flesh, he was made a human, then he died as he said he would do, he would return to where he was before. When he has returned to where he was before, his own disciples did not know the Redeemer. They didn't know him. And so they became helpless and in sorrow. And two of them he met on the way to Emmaus. He was talking with them. They were speaking about him. Said they didn't know him. They didn't see him. And then the scripture tells us in Luke chapter 24, verse 21, they now said this to the Lord, but we trusted that he had been he which should be should have redeemed Israel. Saying that we thought the, the man Christ Jesus would resist, is the one that will redeem Israel. But they have killed him. No hope. There, there's no redeemer. And beside all these, today is the third day since this thing were done. And now we cannot even find his dead body. He's no more. 
And then he now said to them in verse 25, then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Since they are slow and foolish to believe, how can you say that the Redeemer is no more? When Job has said, I know my Redeemer liveth, and Job saw the Redeemer in his flesh, as he said. So how can a people that came many years later and were his own disciples in, when he was made a human, now said they are looking for the Redeemer? Job initially, Job can be excused. But he said today we don't have an excuse. That's why he said, oh, fools are slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. That we have to believe all the prophets have spoken. That all the prophets have spoken is the scriptures. That it is the scripture that God wants us to believe. That he sent his word. And he healed them and delivered them. That he is the Redeemer. That by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. By the word of the Lord, he brought out the whole multitude from Egypt with a strong hand. Amen. He whipped Pharaoh. He told Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh didn't understand. That they are redeemer live it. That the scripture said, let my people go. Do you belong to the scriptures? Are you a person of the Bible? You have to believe what the scripture said. The scripture says they should leave you alone. You belong to me. So Pharaoh was used as example to the generation coming. That the people of the scriptures should be left alone and that their redeemer live it. He will stand on this earth and he's standing. And so he says that all oh, you fools and slow to believe the scriptures. You don't you know that the scripture is the one you should hope in. He's alive now, as he said, that he has begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That when Jesus was raised, he was raised according to the scriptures. That is the scripture says that he is going to rise again on the third day. Now he says that he has brought this lively hope. Nobody was hoping in the scriptures anymore. No one believed the scriptures anymore. He said that by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have this hope that everything written of him must come to pass what a hope not in man not in the flesh in god he said we should leave the dead that's why they said to the women that came to the grave why are you seeking the living among the dead so the lord said to his own why are you slow to believe in the reality the truth is with you why are you looking for him? All you need to do is to believe in this living hope. He said that when God made promise to Abraham, there was no greater to promise to him. He promised him by himself. So Abraham now hope in God. And when Abraham hope in God, then he hope against hope, hope of barrenness, he hope against it. He hope of that, he, it was wonderful. And then God was pleased with him. See, God wants to be pleased with us. He said the way we can, he can be pleased with us is to believe on him. That without his faith, it's impossible to please God. He said of his own, all oh, fools. See, the Lord is calling his own disciples, all oh, fools. The reason is because they did not believe on him. That anyone who does not believe in this God is, is foolishness. That's why he said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. How can you say there is no Christ? How can you say that we don't know where he is? He is alive. This is 
to bring us to this lively hope. Your hope is alive. Amen. Don't you see? See that because he lives, you can face tomorrow. Yes. That's why he was telling the disciples that because I live, you will live also. Live where? Live in me. Move in me. Where I am, I will bring you there. So he brought them into this living hope. Hear more in Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. You see that this hope is not in the world. This is outside the world, before the world was made, created. Says that God has given us hope, hope of eternal life. That God who cannot lie promise it. Verse 3. But had in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Say all that is left is to preach this hope. Say the hope is alive, but is made manifest through preaching. And that is why he wants us to preach him uh, you you will say my hope is alive. See when he become your hope, then you preach him. You tell people concerning this hope because it is the living that can tell this hope. That's why he said in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter thirty-eight, verse eighteen and nineteen: For the grave cannot praise thee; death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. Say the dead person cannot deal with this hope because his hope of the living is a living hope. His hope that is alive. Amen. And so you can only receive this hope while you are alive right now. Not when you go to the grave. And so that's why he said today if you hear his preaching, had he not your heart. We are preaching this hope that is alive, so that your hope will be alive, your joy alive. He said, when they saw him, their joy revived, their hope revived. Yet Job says, I know my Redeemer liveth. You know, he redeemed Job from sickness, he redeemed him from poverty, this Redeemer. He said, he changed him in an instant when Job saw him. So it takes seeing him for the change to happen. Change from the dead to the living. Change from hopelessness to hope. Change from that sorrow to joy. Change from money to dancing. Amen. You see, it says that it is the living that will celebrate. You are going to celebrate God. Amen. You are going to celebrate God because your hope is alive. Amen. This hope. He said, this hope is God himself, so that our hope will not be in the flesh of things that are made, that this hope was before the world began. In verse 19, the living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. Are you hearing? See, prophet Isaiah speaking, saying, the living, the living shall praise God as I do this day. You can also praise this God as Isaiah do this day. You can praise this wonderful God, the Father to the children shall make known the truth. He said, tell your children, tell the generation coming that this is our hope. Amen. Our hope is alive. I hope is alive. Pastor Peter writing says that before I go, I will tell you of this hope. You do well, you take heed to this sure word of prophecy, to this scripture, that none of these scriptures came privately. It came from the Holy Ghost. That you do well. You take to this hope. That this hope is the anchor 
Amen. Once you anchor in him, you are free indeed. Once you anchor in him, he says you can never perish. You are alive because your hope is alive. Amen. He liveth. He says that it is the living, the living shall praise thee. So anyone who tells you when you depart from this world before you meet this God is not true. You meet him here because he is living. He is God of the living, not of the dead. And so receive this hope as Abraham received the hope. And receive this hope that is alive as Isaac received this hope. He said Isaac hope in this wonderful Receive this hope as Jacob, a hope in him. He became the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He said he can also become your God today by receiving him. And so God is saying to us that our hope, my hope, your hope is alive. That this hope is God himself. Amen that we are to testify of him, we are to speak of him. And this is the plan of God for us, for every one of us. Hear what Peter said, Peter who received this hope. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? You know, Jesus says, no man is good except God alone. That it is the word of God that is the good one. He says, who is he that will harm you if you be followers of the good word of God? He said the multitude of his people, he brought them out from Egypt. They were following him. And Pharaoh was not aware. Pharaoh said they were entangled by the Red Sea. They don't know the way. Pharaoh did not know that he is the one that didn't know the way. And then he said, these people, they are entangled. I will pursue after them. I will harm them. I will get my glory over them. I will overtake them. And then he pursued. He did not know that it is him that will be harmed. Not the people. Say that this good shepherd of Israel, this amazing living hope, this hope that is alive, located from the front to the back. He said when he bring out his sheep, he will come and lead them. Yeah. And then when the enemy want to harm them, because he is the good shepherd, he gave his life to the sheep. Right. He came between his own people and the Egyptians. He said he put a permanent separation. The light separated them, giving light to his own and the Egyptians in darkness. Pastor Peter is saying that if you be a follower of this God, who is going to harm you? What a hope. Why are we joking? He says that you can get full protection, everlasting protection with no that is full proof. Nothing can harm you. No witch, no wizard. That's why he said no weapon found against you can work. Amen. All you need to do, be a follower of this good word of God. Amen. This awesome word of God. Yes. Settled. As he said, so it is. Verse 14. But if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are you. And be not afraid of your terror. Let there be trouble. He said, don't be afraid of their terror because you can only see the reward of the wicked. It doesn't concern you. You are following this good one. So when terror or trouble comes, it's not for you. Amen. Because the trouble that came upon the Egyptians was not for his people. All the plagues he brought on the Egyptians were not for his people. So they, he said, happy are you. Please be happy that you have this awesome hope this hope that is alive and then what did he say we should do in verse 15 but sanctify the lord god in your heart and be ready always 
to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Say, so all we need to do is to sanctify the Lord, the Lord God in our hearts, and then be ready to preach him, be ready to give an answer to everyone that asks you, what is the hope you have? You said that Jesus Christ is my hope. The word of God is my hope. That is why he said, who will harm you if Christ be your hope? If it's him you are following. It is those who leave him that have sorrow. He said, in me you have peace, joy, protection, and every good thing in the world, tribulation. But be of good cheer. Yes. I overcome the world. Says that all we need to do is to have this knowledge that our hope is alive. And if anyone asks you, what is the reason? Why are you happy? You tell them, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. My hope is not in bank account, it's not in chariot, it's in the Lord. Some trust in all these things. I don't do so. I trust in the Lord. He shall supply what I need. My hope is in this awesome God that even in the grave is Lord. The hope I have is him. He's able to raise the dead. He's able to give life to the lifeless. That's my hope. He says that if anyone asks you, what is your hope? Why do you come to Bible Revelation Ministry? Why do you go online and be listening? He said, my hope is in Christ. I want to hear more of him. Yes. He's doing me good. Because everything is working together for good to them that are called for this purpose. To have this hope in them. God came to bring us to this lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He came to deliver us from the dead flesh to the living world. He came to show us that it is Adam that made us to plunge into the flesh, into servitude and suffering. And started living in the sweat to eat. He came to deliver us and then show us the way. The way that God ordained for us to walk in, move in, and have our being. That it is this way that God says should be our hope. That we should hope in the word of God. That those who hope, who hope in the word of God can never be ashamed. Can never see shame. Because their hope is alive. When someone hope in a man and the fellow dies, his hope is dead. Says, but our hope cannot die. Our hope is effective. He told Joshua, Joshua, is, is it Moses that's your hope? Moses, my servant, is dead. But this hope, this book of the Lord, this holy scripture, let him be your hope. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. Amen. As I was effective for Moses, I will be effective for you. Do you know that this hope is effective today? That is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He worked for David, he will work for you. He worked for Paul and Silas, he will work for you. Amen. He is alive today. What a hope. He said the word of God is living. My God. All others dead. That it is only him that has life, immortality. He is the only existing, self-existing, I mean, animating, and the giver of life. So that when they ask you, what is the hope in you? You tell them, there is an opportunity for you to advertise him. There is the opportunity for you to advertise this wonderful. They were asking the woman, they said, what is the hope in you? You are barren. And then this hope showed up. And then he said, don't talk so arrogantly. The Lord is a rock. There's no rock like this. He can take a person from the dung here and promote that person in an instant. He can make the barren to produce. He can demote, he can promote. There is no one like this. Oh, wonderful. He met Solomon one day. He taught him, your body can be like you. Before you, after you, you are the richest. What a hope, what a life, what a power. He said, greater than Solomon is here. 
can play with these living one is for you says that he now and got everything on him he says look you want protection you want to live a life in security genuine security against all demons against all you want to be foolproof in success take to this god guaranteed this one that has never failed will never fail he said take to him and then you will see that there is no one that can harm you there's nothing that can diminish you if you like let them conspire against you like they conspire against joseph and then they say this dreamer is coming Let's see what will become of his dream. And they were the one that was, they were mocked. That when they saw Joseph's letter, they could not recognize him because of the glory. It says that when he decorates you, when God will, do, will turn your life around. Oh, when he turn your life around, they will ask you, what is the hope in you? Joseph told them, it is God. You intended to do evil unto me, but God turned it around. Yes. Your intention was to make Joseph to fail, but God's intention was to make Joseph succeed. Amen. Oh, take to this hope. It is this book, mm -hmm. this wonderful Bible. It says it shall be preached in all generations. Be one of them. Yes. They have this lively hope. It's everyone that have this hope, uh, sanctify him in their heart what a hope we have what is the hope we have the kingdom of god is the hope we have the kingdom of what is the hope we have the word of god is the hope we have the word of god what is the hope we have the kingdom of god is the hope we have the kingdom of god do you know that's the kingdom of god the word of god is the kingdom of god you can enter today jesus says strive to enter in he said once you enter in no one can harm you he's a strong tower the righteous run into it and he's safe. You can be saved today from all things pursuing you. And so you're going to pray unto him and say, God, I've seen my hope is alive. I thought everything was hopeless. I see the one hope that the Job was speaking of, that his Redeemer lived, and truly you perfected Job. You hid him, changed him, gave him double. Oh, Father, I've discovered you are the one that can change my life. Oh, King of glory, come in. Come in to stay, oh Lord, I need you because I've seen that my hope is alive. I have hope today. Oh, let this hope enter me, then I will jolly, jolly and praise you. Pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Almighty Jesus, Savior, Jesus, eternal Jesus, spirit, thank you, thank you for Lord, coming to begot us to a lively hope. The hope of the word of God. We all fail. The word of God will not fail. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that moment of hearing from the throne of grace again. Thank Him. As you have heard, the title of the message is My Hope is a Life. So, so God has fed up with a lovely message again tonight, making us to know that uh, our hope is not dead because God fulfilled for us by raising. Christ Jesus from the dead. That's our hope. If Jesus was not risen, our hope would have been dead as well. So, but we have the risen Lord. Amen. And he's our life. He's our hope. He's everything to us. So, we let's begin to thank God for this hope, this lively hope he has given to us, the hope that is our life forevermore in Jesus' name. Almighty oh, Father, Father Heaven, we thank you for you have shown us the hope that forevermore, Lord, that what is set in heaven, the one unremovable, 